Welcome, super smarties. Let the learning begin. Okay, we're in hallway classroom here, and my kids went to the beach yesterday, and the beach is like underneath me. Not enough of it to like relax and enjoy, no sun overhead, but enough of it to be like irritating. Ugh. Ugh. This is the only part I don't like about the beach is the part that comes home and then is on the hallway, and now I have to sit on it. Ugh. Time to regulate so I can get ready to learn or to teach. I'm a little in the blue right now, even though it's Sunday and I get to see my super smarties in the parking lot at the powwow. All right, I'm just gonna regulate. All right, our strategy today, we're just going to use a tool for our mind shift. It's stop, breathe, and let go. But a company called Really Good Stuff had these great magnets that have stop on one side and go on the other. The problem is the magnet on the board at school is a little bit weak. So one side works really well, the green sticks really well, and the red slides down and go goes down the board. So I'm going to use this for the mind shift and you totally could make this out of cardboard at home. You could either print something off the internet or you could just draw it. It's a fun little project and it's a good visual. So what we're going to do is stop and when we stop we're stopping all of our ancillary thoughts, things that we're thinking about that have nothing to do with our calendar and moving forward the learning that we're focused on. So stop is just Stop your thought, stop whatever you're doing, and be prepared to make the transition into what we're going to do next. Then I'm going to lay it on its side and we're gonna breathe deeply. And then on go, we're gonna let go of the breath, okay? And we'll do it three times. That's our trifecta focus. Try three. Try a mind shift to see makes a difference. And it should. Even small things like just stopping momentarily, breathing intentionally, letting go of the breath, and focusing on what thoughts come through and let them pass. What thoughts come in, let them pass through. And then being aware of ourselves because our goal is always to be calm, focused and at peace. Breathing helps us calm down, helps us let go of whatever's pulling our attention so that we can be focused and it lets our body relax and be at peace. Oftentimes we hold what's called stress or distress in our body and we're not even aware of it until we breathe and then we realize we've been holding our neck tight or our shoulders tight or our back tight and when we breathe, automatically our body says, oh, stretch a little bit, let go. And we have what's called lactic acid that kind of sits in between our joints and our muscles inside. And when we move, it kind of releases some of that. When we exercise, even if it's just sitting down and exercising and taking some deep breaths, and then the air that gets caught between our joints, it's like, joint gas, like we're passing gas inside our joints. You can feel that crunching, like glass, crackling glass, crunch, 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 crunch. But usually it feels pretty good. It just feels good to kind of let that go. But when we don't pause, we don't stop what we're doing to become aware of what we're feeling, we just transition from one thing to the next thing, carrying the distress from what happened before and the distress and the stress, the focus on the stress and our body feels that distress and it carries that stress into the next activity. And then sometimes we're very short tempered or we get overly tired or we just can't stay focused or we get very snippy with other people. So we wanna be very aware so we can be regulated and ready to learn. All right, ready? So stop, breathe, Let go. Stop. Breathe. Let go. One more time. Stop. Breathe. 
let go. Nicely done. I wonder if it'll stick to the board. Stop. Now let's see if it'll stick on the go side. Oh, I have a go. All right, our go is to go to the calendar. Make sure that you brought your composition board book. I was gonna say board. Don't bring your composition board. Bring us composition book or a notebook or some loose paper. I haven't been recording in here because I've been recording up here, but I hope that you're putting it into a book so you can go back and visit it again and again and again. Read, 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 read everything that you write. Your goal is to get all of this learning into automaticity, fast as a snap, fast as a clap, fast as a blink. That's how fast that I can think. All right, so we need to eliminate some ancillary no longer useful information it was important yesterday, but now this isn't yesterday, this is today. So moving forward, we have to get rid of some of the information we don't need so we can make room for the information that we do need. So I'm going to take away Friday because yesterday wasn't Friday. Friday was, yes, was, Friday was yesterday's yesterday. I know that sounds confusing. It's like I'm my own grandpa, although I can't be a grandpa because I'm not a boy. I'm old enough to be a grandpa, but I have to be a grandma. Okay, so we just had 16, and we're going to turn the 16 into one more than 16. I'm giving myself a face space. This is called multitasking. It's not a good idea. You should always unitask. It's easier on your brain, and then you don't forget things and make mistakes. I'm going to forget that it was 16 yesterday, and then I'm going to have to wonder what today is. Okay, so here's my face space. It's Sunday, so I like to put grace on Sunday. I'm trying to adopt a baby girl. Her name will be Grace. So I hope she's not quite this skinny, but she'll probably be bald like this and be cute. All right, so here's Grace, and it was 16, so we need one more than 16. Let's start at 13 and count on. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. The 6 goes up by 1. So we have 1 in the tens place and a seven in the ones place. Our pattern is always to move forward one day forward, one number forward. Five dash, 17 dash, 20. We're starting to run out of days in May. And for our school, we end the first week in June. And then I'm gonna change up how we do this because right now, this is loaded as the big lesson of the day, but I'm going to break it into smaller lessons so you can keep working over the summer but I'm going to put calendar and a micro lesson really quickly together. And then I'm going to do extended lessons. So maybe I'll put calendar and a nano lesson, and then I'll do a micro lesson separately so that you can still keep on learning. Practice, practice, practice everything that we've learned and get ready for kindergarten or first grade, or if you're in preschool, getting ready for TK, T, K, or kindergarten or first, oops, first grade or any other grade that you're getting ready for. That would be good too. So yesterday was the last day of the week, sat er day. And here I have it. So I'm going to transfer the information up. Face space, capital S-A-T-U-R of Turkey and the chunk day, D-A-Y. So yesterday can't be Saturday, and today be Saturday also, so we'll erase Saturday for today. Today is moving the information up, capital S-U-N-D-A-Y, and then put a period. So if yesterday was Saturday and today is Sunday, tomorrow will be, I can see it peaking, Monday. So this is the first day of the week, but this is the first day of the school week. So when we listen to songs on YouTube or children's learning songs, sometimes they start the days of the week song with Sunday, and sometimes they start the days of the week song with Monday. Neither are more right or more wrong, because if you're in school, your school week starts on Monday, <laughs> except for us, hallway school is just every day. But the actual week starts on Sunday. The week ends even though they're back to back, so they just look like they're touching, so it looks like a week end. The Sunday that starts one week is not the Sunday that touches the Saturday because Saturday is the last day of this week 
So the Sunday that comes behind it is the Sunday that's the first day of the next week. So confusing, right? Okay, so tomorrow will not be Sunday. Tomorrow will be the first day of the school week and work week. And many parents are going back to work, but we're not going back to school until the fall. And then we might still be in hallway school, but you'll have a brand new teacher and new friends to meet either virtually or live or hybrid both. Sunday, Monday. I know mm, mm, M uh, of love, mm, of nose, day, D-A-Y, same chunk, and then a period. Yesterday was Saturday. That's in the past. Today is Sunday. That's in the present. Tomorrow will be Monday. That's in the future. So I'm going to change my sentence at the bottom today. And I'm going to erase this is because it's getting faded. I should probably just write the whole thing over, but I'm not going to do that today because I have other things I want to do. Sun, day, compound word, comma, May 16th. No, one more than 16. I put a one in the tens place. I put a seven in the ones place. 17. It's hard to see the period at the end. Today is Sunday, May 17th, 2020. Or, O-R, I can just say it using numbers, 5-17-20. All right, if you look carefully, we're going to be doing some phonemic awareness, listening for sounds, and we're going to transfer that over into phonological awareness, phonics transferring the sound into a symbol to represent the sound we say and the sound that we hear. All right. Oh, no, that's what we're going to do over there. <laughs> okay, I'm so confused. I could see that and then I forgot. We're going to do this first. This has nothing to do with phonics. This is math. Sheesh. We're not on the field trip yet. Sunday, I'm trying not to work. What do we know about me? If I'm awake, I'm making a mistake which must mean I am learning all the time. I can dump out a whole bunch of schema because apparently I'm always building it. It's expected, yes, because it's me. It's expected for you too. But I'm the only one in the room, so we'll just point all the fingers at me. <laughs> Needs to be inspected and then respected. And I just got distracted because it's Sunday and I'm thinking of church. I need to go to church parking lot powwow. This is our last one. We're going to do it differently. So I'm kind of, I guess I should have been in the blue zone, but I'm in the green because I get to see my kids, but I'm super distracted. Sorry. All right. And you need to know that you need to learn from mistakes, but they don't always have to be your mistakes. You can learn from other people's mistakes as well. The key to mastery is effort. Opportunities to grow are all around us. And never ever give up. Nice growth mindset advice. All right, I'm not gonna give up even though I made a mistake. This is patterning. So here we see the pattern unit. So the pattern unit is whatever sets the landscape for what's going to repeat. So a pattern unit is the basic set that has to repeat over and over and over again. There can be no variance or you break the pattern. Once you break the pattern, it isn't a pattern anymore. If we were to put a puppy dog and a cat here, that would be nice in terms of pictures, but it wasn't going to help us at all in terms of our pattern. Is it going to? Was it? Is it? Won't? No, not at all. But here we see a leaf. I know it's poorly drawn, but it's the best I could do. And this is not a sword or a light, night light. It's actually an acorn. So a leaf and an acorn. Leaf, acorn, and there are two lines. So what comes next? You have to repeat the pattern unit. So it's leaf, looks kind of like a feather or glove, and an acorn. Leaf, acorn, leaf, acorn, to infinity beyond and to beyond. You have to just continue doing those over and over and over again. Now that's a pretty simple pattern. This pattern becomes a little more complex because here we see a banana and an apple. If this were an AB, 
This is an A. This is a B. This represents A. This represents B. This is a good strategy for you to make sure that you're putting into your notebook or your composition book and you're extending the learning, getting traction action by writing it onto a white mat or onto paper, playing with ob actual objects, but also identifying it using the letters because that's early practice for later algebra when the letters represent a number but here they're representing the symbol but it teaches your brain that a letter can be substituted and sometimes you have to find what the missing letter symbol or number is and numbers are symbols too so if I were to put a and leave this blank but then you were to see my pattern extended and you saw this leaf here you would know that the leaf is represented by A, and A represents the leaf. So you could fill in the missing information with the information you have. All right, so here's a banana. This is A. Since there's an apple, we can't put A again because now it has changed, so we're going to use a different letter. We just use the next one in the sequence, alphabetical order, A and then B. But this isn't a different fruit, it's the same. Not the same as the first fruit, but it's the same as the second one, so we're gonna put a B there also. A, B, B. And what we see is a, a banana, B, apple, B, apple, banana, apple, apple, banana, apple, apple, A, B, B. Now the next one is a little bit more tricky. Arrow, 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 all the same, all the same objects, so it's not an object pattern. This is, this is an object pattern, and this is an object pattern. But it's also, uh, it, there's kind of a pattern within a pattern. It's an object and then it's times shown. This is only shown one time. These are shown two times. Both of these are only shown one time. Here, the arrow is shown every time. But what's different about them all is the direction that they're pointing. So one is pointing up, so that's an A. One is pointing down, so that's a B. One is pointing to the right, so that's a C. One is pointing to the left, so that's a D. So there are actually four things in this pattern. There's an arrow going up. There's an arrow going down. There's an arrow going to the right. And there's an arrow going to the left. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. A, B, B. A, B, B. A, B. A, B. One more pattern. Now this one locks two symbols together in the pattern. So it's XX, OO. So even though there are two things here, those two things have to be recorded on one line. It's not XX, OO. X, X, O, O. With space in between, it's X, X, O, O. So this isn't A, A, B, B, this is, I guess you could record it that way, but the way it's recorded here, this X and X is represented by A. And this is important because later in algebra, sometimes there's bigger numbers that are represented by that letter. So when you see it this way, it helps your brain be flexible later to understand more numerals or more digits could be represented by that letter. It's not just one single thing represented by it. Sometimes it's a set one set of things, and then B, and then A, and then B. All right, make sure you've transferred this into your notebook or composition book. Stop the tape momentarily if you need to see the information. We're gonna move this aside, and now, we are going on a phonics field trip. Now's the time. Honk, honk, beep, beep. Climb on the bus. Pshh. Time for our learning field trip. I love field trips for real. I love them. I love virtual ones as well. I love learning field trips the most. I'm channeling the inner teacher inside of me. Channel your inner learner and then you will love this kind of field trip most too. Okay, so this is change the sound, change the symbol. Change the sound, change the symbol. So we're changing things up. So here I see a picture of a card. Card. K-R-D. K. 
R, D. Two letters get together and this is the R of star card. Now look at this. You might use one of these at the store to push your groceries around the store that you're going to buy prior to buying them because your arms could get so full you can't put them in bags because then it looks like you're trying to steal. Especially now if you're wearing a mask and gloves, carrying some stuff in some bags that you didn't pay for, that's not going to look right. So you absolutely need to get a cart. Whoa, listen. K -R -T. Still three sounds. K same at the beginning. R, same in the middle. But the ending, card. Cart. Oh. If this was represented by a D and this says T, can I still put a D? A no. Right. It can't be a D or it would be the same word. And the picture is carrying the message that this does not look the same. So I can't use the same word to describe it. This is a card. This is a cart. So look which letter I changed. I changed the ending letter. And when I changed the ending letter, I also changed the ending sound. Now let's look at this one. Here's a picture of a what? K R. Only two sounds in it. And we know that the R was represented by two letters like the R of star. So we have K, steel or C. Sounds like a K, but it's not. Car, K R. This we saw over here. It's not a car. The picture looks different. So the word has to be different. The message says they're not the same. So the word, the meaning cannot be the same. Car, d, car, d. So we added an ending sound, and when we added a sound, when we did plus a sound at the end, over here, here we just changed it. So I'm going to do it like this. Change it. We just changed the sound. We changed it to something different. But here we added a sound and we came up with card. Let's look at this one. It's a number. What's the word for it? 10. 10. It's the number 10. T -n. T -e -n. Ooh, there's three sounds. T -e -n. T -t. That's the T, like cart. E -e -e, like elephant. E Mm, N. Now, this is not a 10. The picture looks totally different. You would use this in your camping. It's called a tent. Tent. So did we change the ending sound or did we add a sound to the end? We added a sound to the end. So we plus added a sound to the end. So we have the 10 I'll put the 10 in the tent. Hmm, I wonder. It didn't make up the word, so it was not me. 10. T. We added the sound of t. Tent. Now here's the 10 again. T. E. N. This does not look the same, so the word cannot be the same. This was a 10. What is that? You write with it? It's a pen. So we did not change the beginning sound. Listen, the ending sound, ten. This is a pen. The ending is the same. T, n, p, n. Did you see my mouth? Did it look the same? T, p, t, p. It's not the same, so I can't use the same letter. So we're going to change the beginning sound. Look at both my arrows went the same way. I want to change the beginning sound. So now we're going to put a p, p, like pig. P, and the e, n stays the same. Pen. So here we added this. Here we changed that. So the beginning sound was different. Now here is a picture of a fan f a n f like fish 
like apple. Mmm, like ten. The end of ten and nose. Fan. This is a grown-up boy. We call him a man. Mmm, an. F an. Mmm. The beginning sounds just like ten and pen. The beginning of man is different. Mm, like mittens. An. So what we did is we changed the beginning sound. The beginning sound. So we had to change the beginning letter. All right. This is a fan again. And we already know how to spell it. An. Now these are lips, but look at this. This is what we're looking at. What is that giant tooth sticking out? It's a fang. 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 Four sounds. Fan. Fan. G. Like guitar. Fang. So we added one extra sound here at the end. Fang. We added a g to make fan turn into a fang. How do you turn a fan into a fang? You add a g, of course. How do you turn a ten into a pen? You change the t, of course. How do you turn a car into a card? You add a d, of course. How do you change a card into a cart? You change the D, of course, to a T. How do you turn a 10 into a tent? You add a T, of course. How do you turn a fan into a man? You change the F, of course, to an N. Pretty good. Lots of fun. So what I'd like you to do, transfer this learning. Create a list of words by changing the beginning sound and changing the ending sound. Now, not all the words that you change can you represent with a picture because not everything is a noun. But try manipulating the sounds and changing the letters to see if you can make different words. A good idea is to write words on a card, like on cards, like write letters or write the word on the card, leave some space in between and cut them apart. That's the easiest way. And then move the letters around and put them back into order and then see if there's other words you can make when you take them out of order. Try and see if you add a sound or you delete, that means take away a sound, do you get a different word and does it have a different meaning? And is it a real word that we hear and we see when we read and we write or is it a nonsense word? It's okay to manipulate words into nonsense words. Dr. Seuss did it and wrote them into books and then they became actual words in his books. Not necessarily words the rest of us use in our regular language when we speak or when we write, but we could read them in his books. So nonsense words have a value when you're learning how to manipulate language. They let you know and others know if you know the sounds that the letters represent and that we make when we read and we write. They also let someone know if you can blend, push the sounds together, if you can delete, take the sounds away, if you can isolate, give each sound in a word. So those are fun games that you can play today with a bigger person or even try it all on your own. Make sure you're putting it into your composition book. All right, schema, schema store is slamming the door. Schema store, go slam the door. Shop is shut. No more schema for today. You'll have to come back tomorrow ready to learn. So I'm a Hearty goodbye, a hearty goodbye, smarty. Make sure you come back ready to learn. Here's some pride. This was some big learning, so you're gonna need that. And of course, there's some love. So put that pride inside, and then put the love into a safe place. You're gonna need that for later. You can have a little bit of it now. It's like a little bit like dessert. Have a little now and a little more later. I'm just kidding. You cannot get too much love, so just go ahead and take it now. The other thing I want you to do is give yourself a hug. You need a lot of hugs to stay healthy, to not get sick. And you can actually close your eyes. We'll do this as a mind shift. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Picture someone you love. Imagine they're giving you a hug. 
The brain can't always tell the difference between someone really doing it and us imagining it. So that feels good. Give yourself a hug, a pat on the back, kiss your brain. You deserve it. That was awesome. Super Teacher is about to head